Hey, I am Mateo Lane, and today we are making the real carbonara. Hello, I'm Mateo Lane. Today we're making the real carbonara. All right, so the real carbonara, the recipe's basically been destroyed, right? Not even just Americans, everybody else outside of Italy. The Romans have a pretty specific rule with carbonara. It has to be dry pasta, spaghetti or rigatoni, egg pecorino romano, guanciale, which is this, <laughs> which is this part of the pig, and pepper. So this is guanciale. I'm just gonna start cutting it up. I mean, it looks, I'm gonna take off this skin part here. You know, yesterday I went to Italy. I had a guy helping me shop and I was like, I need, by helping me shop, I had someone shopping for me, but he was like, I'm like, I need guanciale. And he was like, oh, okay. And he like reached for the bacon. I was like, what? I was like, this is Italy. This is the one place that you sh He also got me linguine instead of spaghetti. I like to cut my guanciale just in tiny little like strips like this. I think it cooks really nicely. And uh, some people like them in thick cubes. I don't necessarily like them in big thick cubes like that. I feel like the barefoot, oh by the way, do you like the painting of the barefoot Contessa in my kitchen? It's a painting I did for art school. I went to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and everyone is very highfalutin. And on the last day when we were doing our portfolio day, like you have like this gigantic gallery wall. All these snotty art people come and they look at stuff. I just did a, a painting of the Barefoot Contessa. So I had a giant gallery wall with just her. How fabulous is that? I like her show just because it's so unrelatable. You know, she opens up her episodes and she'll be like, Jeffrey and I are buying a boat. I'm like, all right, you've lost 90% of your audience. I don't even think I've been on a boat. This is my New York City apartment. Uh, I live in the West Village. This is a uh, COVID deal. My first apartment actually was in this neighborhood and I had a bathtub in my kitchen. I lived like, you know, an Italian immigrant from the 1940s. <laughs> so this is a really huge step up. And I have also in my apartment, a dishwasher. And if you're a New Yorker, whoo, you're jealous. That was a selling point of this apartment. There could have been a dead body literally lying on the floor. And they're like, but there's a dishwasher. I'd be like, I'm in. But I didn't go buck wild. Like I didn't get one of those apartments with like a doorman and stuff. Like I, it's still a walk up. Okay, so. Here's how we're gonna cook our guanciale. We're gonna cook it very slowly. You don't need to use olive oil. You don't need to use um, vegetable oil for sure. Because it has so much fat in it, you're just gonna slowly cook it in its own fat. Sounds like me on Christmas. All right, so I'm gonna put it on a really, really low heat. And we're just gonna let that start to crisp up. We're gonna be using some of that fat and oil in our pasta later. So now let's make the base for la carbonara. So the base of the carbonara, it's usually two egg per person. If you want it extra creamy, I learned from this Italian Instagram called Carbo Gang. It's a bunch of Italians who just make carbonara. You should follow them. They were nice enough to have me in their house and they made me carbonara. One thing you can do is add an extra egg. Now I use just the egg yolk. Some people use a mix. Some people use just eggs. Some people just use egg yolks. I find it has a creamier texture and tastes less eggy if you just use the egg yolk. All of these are acceptable answers. I've seen everyone from the pasta queen to Vincenzo's plate to Luciano in Rome do a variation of this style, so long as it's egg. And try and get a nice egg, you know, one that has color in it. See like how nice and yellow this is? Actually, it's almost orange. Carbonara in Italy sometimes comes out like, ooh, almost orange because it's like they actually take care of their chickens. I'm sure there's a better way, or more practical way to get the egg yolk out of here, but this is the way my mom did it, and so this is the way I'm doing it. Oh no! <gasps> Wait, can I save it? Hey, Saved! My eggs feel so gross, I feel like I'm a ghost hunter. Okay, so we've got our egg yolks, and now we're gonna add our cheese. So this is a pecorino romano. I grated this myself. You wanna grate it so it's super, super fine. You don't want it to be um, shredded. And you're gonna use a pretty good amount. I wish I had some kind of like measurement for you, like, oh, you should use this, but I don't know. I have no idea. There's a whole process to this. So this is our base, right? Now you can see it's gonna look really thick. Now we're not gonna add any cream to this. This is like my workout. It looks very yummy, doesn't it? 
Okay, here's something I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring it over to our boiling water and start mixing it on the boiling water. Just because it will help change the consistency and help make it look really thick and really creamy. There's a restaurant in Rome called Luciano and he's like the king of carbonara. I'm an asshole. Why would I do shoulders on a day I'm cooking? This is so painful. <laughs> Whew. My arm is killing me. I got my shoulders. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have done shoulders today. All right, I'm just gonna sort of check on our guanciale. You can see that the fat part is already starting to get clear. We want it to be totally clear and sitting nice and crispy. And it sounds fun. Whew! Add a generous amount of pepper inside your carbonara. I'm never working out again before I cook. I hate my life. <laughs> so we're gonna add in our spaghetti. Okay, it says 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna put my timer on for eight because I like my pasta super al dente. All right, so I'm gonna salt the water. You don't need to use too much salt for carbonara because it's already such a salty meal. And there's two of us, Chris, who's filming. Let's do like half a box. And start stirring your pasta. When you're cooking pasta, you really wanna have enough water in there. I think sometimes a lot of people don't put enough water in their pasta and their pasta ends up sticking to itself. You need to give your pasta enough water to breathe and swim and be happy. I'm gonna give this like five minutes and then those starches will release and I'm gonna use that pasta water and bring it into my base and mix it around in my base so that way it starts to like become really creamy. And then that way it'll stick to the pasta. And now we just sort of sit and wait. I guess I can clean up these eggshells. Ugh. God, this is what it's like after sex. It's just like a disgusting, sticky mess. You're like, is there a baby wipe? I think I see why um, like chefs in America don't want to make carbonara in America because it's like so much eggs are used. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, so many eggs are used during brunch. So like, what's the difference? One of those meals that people just can't get right. I think a lot of other cultures sort of sense the same thing. I think a lot of Mexican culture and Chinese culture, there's a lot of Americanized versions of their food and people eat it and think it's authentic. And it's fine, you know, but it just, it's nice to have the option of having the real food. Okay, our guanciale is starting to look good. Yeah. I mean, it's literally just fat. It looks stressed out. I can smell that it's domestic guanciale. We're going to start thinning out our carbonara base. I'm taking some pasta water, and then what I'm gonna do is slowly bring it into our base. This is so you avoid scrambled eggs. So what is it called, tempering? Is that what this is called? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. You don't use cream, you're gonna use the pasta water to help thin it out. Let's turn our guanciale off. That's the thing with this recipe is you're kind of jumping all the way around. Cacho and Pepe is much simpler. Yummy! Let's take our guanciale and we're gonna bring it out. That looks just about right. It's partly crispy, it's chewy, all that fat started to render. I'm gonna take a little bit of our oil and bring it into our pasta. You know, because why not? It gives it a nice glossy look, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's try our pasta. Make sure it's not overcooked. It already looks al dente. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're ready to go. Save a little more pasta water, just in case I need to thin it out. Ugh. Nice, what does Barefoot say? A nice steam. Spaghetti. And here we go. I mean, how fabulous is that? All right, let's put some guanciale. And there we go. That's the carbonara. Echo. I like it really um, <laughs> thick. I said what I said. But that's the best part about having the pasta water is you can kind of make it as thick and thin as you want. There you have it. A nice and glossy, beautiful carbonara. Una carbonara. Let's try it. 
It's so yummy. It tastes like Rome. Look at that. Perfectly al dente pasta. Mmm. Thanks for watching me make carbonara. Yeah, we'll be making more videos, more pasta videos, more content. Bon appetito. Subscribe.